Speaking of leadership, I want to express my deep gratitude and my appreciation for a dear friend, Dr. Rajendra Pachauri, who we called Pachi, for the leadership of the kind that Your Excellency ran, you talked about the courage to lead at costs, significant personal and professional costs. And I think that this forum can feel infused by his energy, which is now limitless. So I also want to thank and express my gratitude to Dr. Ash Pachauri and Dr. Shonali Pachauri for carrying that legacy forward and to having the courage and the strength, the stamina of psyche and soul to lead. And I'm really impressed by the, the kind of love and leadership that you're exhibiting in the world. Spe <laughs> thank you so much. So Dr. Pachauri was a fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science and he was serving on the board of the Academy and was an invaluable member that made tremendous contribution to our organization, not just to IPCC and continuous other uh, series of organizations and initiatives. And the question of the courage to lead and what kind of leadership we need now is the qu question that preoccupies this organization, especially in this very moment when we feel the pressure as humanity, we feel squeezed together to think together, to problem solve together, to, co to be compassionate together, to figure out what is the next stage of human development. Can there be the next stage? What it is going to be like? And as one of my colleagues, Nilim Abad, said, what is the story, the new story that needs to be told, disseminated, and serve as the cultural, new cultural source code that we get, the, the, the new currency, cultural currency that we exchange in trust, in compassion, and with the vision for the future. So, with this kind of preoccupation, we have created an initiative with the United Nations in Geneva that is focused on global leadership, not as a program to nurture more leaders, which we know we need, right, to unleash individual potential, but rather to think about leadership as collective process for solution generation. It's a social process that we need to derive. We have had many, many devastating events through our history, but also many accomplishments. And we have not been sure if we have distilled the right kind of process, the right kind of principles for leadership to take us to the next evolutionary stage, to know how to apply them, to know how to accelerate, rapidly acceler accelerate social change. So if you had a chance to look back at the first uh, slide, I want to quickly just honor uh, my organization that I'm representing today and give you a uh, a little bit of a background what it meant to lead and give you a historical example of leadership. World Academy of Art and Sciences is the only World Academy. We have National Academies of Arts and Sciences. And it was founded 60 years ago, we celebrate this year 60 years, by masterminds such as Einstein, Bertrand Russell, Oppenheimer, a very disillusioned scientist whose fruits of labor were appropriated for destruction of humanity, but a deeply enheartened human being who said, no more. We scientists in our knowledge are being co-opted for terrible, terrible ends. And we need to call for the social responsibility of science. And that's how the organization was started, with the courage to call for social responsibility of science, as well as to realize that the Cold War era was polarizing human psyche, politics, as well as the planet and people, destroying us and say, we, we will have no more of this. This kind of responsibility is also exemplified in IPCC that uh, Patchy, our dear friend Patchy, spearheaded this entire initiative. And 11,000 scientists who have given their best research, their best fruit of labor, to prove that we are tracking a terrible course as humanity. So this is some information about the Academy, and it is such a privilege to have, uh, you know, an incredible fellowship with some of the brightest minds on the planet and some of the most impassioned practitioners and activists on the planet. So uh, 
I just want to mention to you, as I have already kind of pointed out in my own way, rather than, than following the presentation, one of the needs that we have today is for that kind of leadership. Because let's think together for a second. Who is in charge of climate change? Nobody as such. Is anybody in charge of the technological developments and the way they're going to take course? No, because there is no leadership, there is no agreement of, of the ethical leadership that we need to, to guide these processes. So, in the era of unprecedented speed, of this unbearable ecological and ethical uh, challenges that we're facing, we have a tremendous uh, urgency because none of these challenges can be tackled by one organization, by one nation, by even one international organization. It's impossible. It is the place where all institutions, all organizations, all knowledge and all the people have to come together so that we have a process of synthesizing knowledge and synergizing coming together, harmonizing for action. And that process includes all of us and all these amazing, beautiful faces that I see here and recognize in this youth from before. So this kind of leadership requires a sense of empowerment to come forward together. The knowledge is there, the examples are there. Where we are failing is where we are actually lacking coordination, coherence, collaboration, and coming together. So, if some of the elements of leadership, because I really want to point out to this, is not a singular person or a singular initiative. And I want to recognize that besides the individuals, there are organizations such as IPCC that have been leaders. There are ideas and theories. The idea of sustainability is an idea that is moving fronts, creating global movements now. Goals such as SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. I mean, there's many narratives, such as the idea that we come from tribal people, then we have become citizens of certain nations, now we're becoming planetary citizens, or as we now say, global society. But more and more, there's a new narrative emerging. There's a new narrative emerging that's called we're planetary beings. We are a living, breathing, vulnerable system, evolving system, embedded in a living system and beyond. Okay? So this just to point out to you and social movements, of course, uh, 11,000 scientists had to belabor a truth and had to bring forth the facts but the heart and the resolution and the mind of one girl that refused to go to school one day moved all the fronts on behalf of all of those giants that came before her. So think about what would happen if all of you decided not to go to school one day. We'll talk about that later. But in any case, I just want to point to out, to out to you a whole range of leaderships that we need to talk about and recognize. So, does anybody recognize this picture? It's just another girl with a peace sign and a big heart and, and, and a drive of the entire crowd. This is an image from Woodstock. Anybody knows what that is? We're, ex excellent. That is the 60s, the revolutionary 60s. I just wanted to bring out an example to see that we are mirrored here. This is the cycle of evolutionary push that we are experiencing again. But the actual question now is, we have done this before, but the actual question now is, how can we truly unify fronts and achieve in five years what they did for 50 years reshaping our social norms and our values? But we can because we have the means of connectivity, because the leadership of today and the youth of today has the capacity to connect and convene in ways that have also been unprecedented. So I just want to show you a couple of images that are really deeply moving. What happens in a rainbow of humanity when they come together? So as I said, leadership is a transformative process. 
uh, social process, and that the leadership as this wider notion can accomplish more than any single one. And then the next image I wanted to show to you is that another threshold, another th amazing historical threshold that we should not forget, which is the fall of the Berlin Wall. And another cultural movement that started it, which was basically ushered by the terror of the famine of the starvation in Ethiopia and our empathy that started among artists and the Live Aid concerts. Anybody remembers Bob Geldof and that? That's what preceded this when the Berlin Wall fell and the entire restructuring of the, of the world began. So if these are the highlights in history, how can we now connect these dots? What have we learned in the process? What is the trajectory? What are the principles? Can we consciously, intentionally, compassionately, coordinatedly apply them to truly generate social transformation? And this, I hope you recognize yourself here, is the current moment, the beauty of the current moment. Nothing more to be said here. So I just want to point out to you a design because the, the global leadership and the idea of leadership should actually lead to something. And I would say it should lead to new social architecture. To new social architecture, which entails restructuring all of our means of production and consumption. We sh should move to the means of creation and just sharing. And all of our means of relating to each other to our home, to this beautiful planet with which we are co-emergent and with ourselves, with our own psyche, with our own consciousness and conscientiousness. So, because if this is the kind of consciousness we try to take to Mars, Mars doesn't stand a chance either, okay? So, I just want to point out that the project itself is focused as a quest for this transformative leadership we are not here to tell you that we got answers on how to do this because we can't do it without you. So our goal is to actually uh, have multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary, multi-domain, right? Conversations and consultations with all kinds of partners from all different domains and sectors, all walks of life to learn from what you have learned from your experiences so that these are some of the sectors that we will be uh, talking to. And then the next uh, stage of the project would be, of course, to uh, bring together about 800 partners and collaborators in Geneva on the 27th and 28th of October. And uh, we will be celebrating 60 years of the World Academy of Art and Science and 75th years uh, of uh, United Nations. And after that, come a whole set of new um, outputs that we hope to generate with you and we learn from you. So one of the things I would like to point out to you, these are some of the questions about leadership that you can look at. And um, if you go to worldacademy.org, you are going to find all the documents about the project, all the partners, as well as most importantly, a simple general but at least an invitation of a questionnaire to give us some answers about your experiences. What are some examples of collective leadership that inspire you, that make you aspire to that it can move fronts? So in the spirit of this collaboration, uh, Dr. Eshpachauri and myself are going to lead a discussion, a conversation, a meeting of the minds and hearts right after this at the back of that media room at 8.15, and we invite you all to come. We were particularly focused on youth because we're very eager to hear what the youth has to say to us and teach us, as uh, Excellency Ren mentioned that, that we're learning from you. And I would really welcome you to join us so we can have a deeper conversation about the project and also to share experiences. My name is up there. Please feel free to write to me and get in contact. Find us on Facebook. On, on you know LinkedIn, on YouTube, you will be able to see 600 videos from some remarkable masterminds from all over the world on a range of topics. And uh, I am really proud to be uh, here today with you and acknowledge the World Sustainable Development Forum and POP movement are gonna be with us in Geneva and then we continue our in-depth partnership in walking the earth 
forward together. And in the spirit of co-creative leadership, please join us in the uh, conversation afterward. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for sharing your humanity.